Hello, my name is Sean Tigg, and I am a radiologist at Indiana University School of Medicine. In this short seven-minute presentation, I will discuss radiation dose of multiple different chest imaging examinations, and then I will give you some statistics to relate the radiation risk to real-world events. Let's begin by talking about a CT pulmonary angiogram. The effective radiation dose for a CT pulmonary angiogram is approximately 15 millisieverts. So this is equivalent to approximately two routine chest CT scans. This single institution study demonstrated that 60% of all CT pulmonary angiograms were performed in women, and nearly 27% of those women were under the age of 40 years old. Therefore, approximately 16% of all PE studies were done in women less than the age of 40 years old. Because of the radiation risk to young women, the overall population-wide risk of breast and other cancers may increase because of the extensive use of CT pulmonary angiogram in younger women. Because of this, it has been suggested that in women of childbearing age, a lower extremity venous ultrasound should be performed as the first line examination. The effective radiation dose of a conventional pulmonary angiogram is approximately 5 millisieverts. Therefore, it is approximately one-half the dose of a CT pulmonary angiogram. The effective radiation dose of a VQ scan is approximately one millisievert. Therefore, it would take approximately 13 VQ scans to equal the radiation dose of a CT pulmonary angiogram. The relative breast absorbed dose is approximately 70 times higher for a CT pulmonary angiogram versus a VQ scan. The VQ scan has an absorbed dose of approximately 0.28 milligray compared to 20 milligray for a CT pulmonary angiogram. To put this in perspective, a 20-year-old woman receiving a 40 milligray breast absorbed dose has a 68% greater risk of breast cancer by age 35 compared to the same 20-year-old woman without such exposure. Now let's talk about CT lung cancer screening. The effective radiation dose for a low-dose lung cancer screening examination is approximately 1 millisieverts. However, in order to achieve this relatively low dose, we do sacrifice a lot when evaluating the soft tissues. Therefore, the examination is really just optimized to evaluate the lung parenchyma for any lung nodules. It is estimated that an approximately 2% increase in the number of lung cancers would be observed if 50% of 50 to 75 year old current and former smokers underwent lung cancer screening with CT. In order to outweigh this risk, an overall greater than 5% reduction in mortality would need to be observed from a CT screening program. The NLST reduction in mortality of 20% far exceeded this benefit. Now I will briefly discuss the radiation dose associated with high-resolution CT. Each series of a high-resolution CT scan has an effective radiation dose of 0.2 to 1.0 millisieverts. So if an inspiratory, expiratory, and prone series were obtained, up to an additional 3 millisieverts of radiation may be received by the patient. So, when discussing the radiation risk with a patient, it is best to avoid numeric values, those numbers that I've just given you. Those were really for your own educational purposes. It's best to make a comparison with natural background radiation, 
or to compare it to the risk associated with normal activities, and I'll give you some examples in a minute, or to compare it to the radiation risk associated with chest x-rays. One year of background radiation is equivalent to approximately three millisieverts from a combination of cosmic radiation and radon. The dose of a chest CT is around 7 to 10 millisieverts, so it is at least twice background radiation. The risk of death from driving a motor vehicle accident approximately 2,000 miles is 1 in 10,000. So this is the same as the added risk of cancer fatality from a dose of 1 to 10 millisieverts of ionizing radiation. The effective dose of a chest x-ray is approximately 0.1 millisievert. The effective dose of a chest CT is approximately 7 to 10 millisieverts. Therefore, the dose of a chest CT is approximately 100 to 400 times that of a chest x-ray. Not to scare people, but we have discussed the fact that the radiation risk is compounded based on the linear no threshold model. Therefore, it is reasonable for patients to start keeping a log, especially since many of them have several physicians, many of which may not be in the same healthcare system and may not be aware of what CT scans other physicians are ordering. It is reasonable, therefore, for a patient to keep a personal log and report this to the clinicians that are providing care for them. Thank you for your attention and please feel free to leave comments about this video.